I'm basically like a cardio monster. I always outwork any place I'm always in. I, at this point, and albeit I'm a little bit sick, but I don't think that it matters, this was the first time, stylistically, I was like, I don't know that I have the cardio to do this style <laughs> because it feels so endless. But if with my cardio it feels that hard, you would be dragging your opponent into the deep water so hard. And honestly, it's just because I'm tense that it's so hard. So if I took the tension off, it's like try not running with a 20-pound weight vest <laughs> and all of a sudden your 10K doesn't feel so hard. <laughs> but look at that. Stepping back as he comes towards me, pretty smooth. The other option is to step to the side and kick him so that he clotheslines into it. That block came down into the kick. So even though this like trampoline thing is so daunting to me, I'm doing it pretty well. The thing he does is that any time you get decent at something, he turns it up. Like he makes it the next thing. So he's saying that I'm keeping my leg up in the air for too long. So I block and I leave it there and then I step down for the knee. He wants the block to be as fast as his is. So that you're attacking them pretty much as their leg is coming down. You're meeting them at the moment that their foot is hitting the ground because he's that much more relentless than even this is. <laughs> That's what that looks like to him. <laughs> I'll, I'll just leave this here for five minutes before I decide to come knee you. <laughs> he did it again. <laughs> oh, it's too bad I'm in such a shit mood. I didn't find that very funny, but it's funny now. This is the kind of session that I could just cry through, but even though you're crying, you just keep moving. My blocks do stay up really long. thing is I keep I keep stopping after mistakes just as a way to like catch my breath I like give myself a moment to throw a pity party so that I can have a small break but if I find a way to breathe and relax in these movements that's how you become an ultra runner you know like you don't like take more breaks you just learn how to break in the run So that's why he's so relaxed. Like, he spars with me for like an hour and a half, sometimes two hours. And he just keeps going. So here I'm starting to add things on top of other things and still hitting the open side. I couldn't do that three days ago. See, that was the wrong knee. So you just take another step and fire the right knee. What the hell does that stopping do? That doesn't do anything. That didn't create another strike. This is the interesting thing, is that in laying out the car hut blueprint for me about this like trampoline floor, um, he emphasized how important it is where you land all the time. So that's why it's important how you come down off of a block or how you step back. So just instead of going. stepping back with your feet squared, which is what he showed me yesterday, if you step back with your feet squared, you can't do anything. But if you actually switch stance, not only have you gotten out of the way, but you're able to fire. The difference between those things is how you land. Because how you land is either that's what you just did, or now you're ready to just fire low. the next thing. Totally fits in with Ch Chai and what he's teaching me about the rotation of the shoulders. Because when you're a boxer, anytime you're punching, your opposite shoulder is rotating back, which generates the power for the other side. It's the same thing with Karahat's Muay Thai. It's just very three-dimensional. Every strike sets up for another strike. No. 
<laughs> so here he's trying to show me when you match up with the gloves. He wants me to actually push. So I'm just putting gentle pressure on his hands so that I can parry them over to the side. But he's saying go ahead and push on the guard in between things. You just don't want to have constant pressure because when you have constant pressure, someone can take the pressure off and you fall forward. But if you do these little like pumps forward, which is what I'm doing there, he'll push back as well. And you can kind of interrupt someone's balance. Keep going. Keep I think he also amped this up a little bit because um, this is the first time he knows that I have a fight coming up. And so he's kind of like preparing me a little bit. It's Thai nature to up your training a little bit when you have a fight coming. Oh, perfect. See how I didn't care that he was coming at me? That's new. I used to have the, oh, you just changed direction. What the hell do I do? It's kind of amazing. Yesterday's session, my problem was that we were just spinning clockwise the whole time. We're all over the place in this session. Here, I'm kind of, after I land that knee, I'm kind of like resetting to nothing. After that knee, if I threw an elbow or started pushing him again, it would suck for him and give me a chance to breathe. The only time he gets frustrated with me is when I like take the pressure off for no reason. It's when I like let him out or step off or stop for no reason. It's the only time he gets upset. He never gets upset if I fire the wrong thing. So see how my hands are coming to my chest? If I kept them on him, I could keep pushing and directing where his body is going. And that would simplify knowing what I could strike with. Here he wants me to push him into the ropes. I pushed and then kicked immediately and missed him because he was still falling backwards. He's like, push into the ropes, and then as I bounce back, then kick because you know where I'm going to be. Yeah. Keep coming. He's like, keep pushing on me. So I can, I can keep that pressure and alternate between pushing on him, kneeing him, shoving him to the side. It's yet another way to be relentless. God damn, it's so hard to be Karahat, but when you're relaxed doing it, it's so awesome to be Karahat. It's like, I don't know, being the like spinniest bird out of all birds or something. Man, I'm like, two sessions ago, I was constantly at the wrong distance, and right now I'm like constantly at the right distance because of those knees. I'm like, I'm at knee range. I'm so happy. That's my happy range. Now he wants me to shove him more. And the reason he wants me to push him more is because if I push, I can keep him at my knee range. If you're a kicker, you don't do all that shoving because you need slightly more space. As a near, you want to do all that shoving because that's your distance. Just keep moving. Keep flowing. Keep flowing. So Kevin wants me to stop resetting. Just keep moving, even through mistakes, even if you're tired, just keep moving. I just need to get control of my arms a little bit. Keep pushing on him, keep my guard up a little bit. So there, I blocked and didn't need to because he didn't fire, and I turned it into a step, which was good. That's what he keeps asking for. Kick, yeah. 
Whoops. So here, oh, yeah. I was having a hard time the other day oh, in that I would get him on the ropes and just keep like hen pecking him and not have a final move. With the pushing, because it becomes forward and back of his weight all the time, I don't have to worry about what to do next while he's on the ropes. I can keep shoving him and have him coming back into the range that I want for those knees over and over and over again, and then add elbows to that. Inner discussion. Just keep looking for the open. I feel like I'm drowning here. Just keep swimming. Keep swimming. Keep looking for the open side. <laughs> You're doing really good. So Kevin is telling me to just keep just doing what I'm doing. Like, don't matter. worry about making the mistake. Just keep tracking the open side. And it's I'm just side, totally fixated side, on how parry, I'm looking for a break. Side, like, I'm looking for a place to stand for a second because there's no... Nice. Landing point. It's relaxed. The thing is, when you're trying to find a place to land, it's generally to find stability because you're off balance. I'm not off balance as I'm moving at all. It's like you're in water and you're swimming and you're like, I need somewhere to put my feet. And you're like, you're swimming. <laughs> you don't need to put your feet on anything. <laughs> That's not the position you're in. <laughs> so you could swim across the pool and keep moving or you could try to walk along the bottom of the pool and literally fucking drown because that's not how you move in water. Move how you move in water, which is all the time. Like, I just need to accept that I'm in water right now. This is not a terrestrial stroll from rock to rock above the water, which is what I like to do. I'm doing it. I just need to stop trying to you know, get air and dive deep. Just breathe underwater kind of thing. I've got gills.